Hello, and welcome back to the second episode of the Dior Jordan Capsule for the Men's Fall 2020 Collection. everyone and welcome back to Shea TV. My name is Professor Hill and today we have a new episode for all of you. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget, hit that subscribe button as well as give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions about today's lesson, feel free to leave me a comment at the end and don't forget to hit those notifications as we do have some amazing videos that are about to come out this week. So let's get to it. Today, as I like to start my videos, I go through our chapters, and it's going to be a little different selection of chapters. I'm going to start with an overview of our amazing Dior Air Jordan 1 low silhouette. Then I'm going to get into none other than Kim Jones himself. And through Kim Jones, we are going to talk about how Supreme and LV really started and kickstarted his career. And that then implemented a new route in paving the way for him to be the men's creative director over at Dior. Then we're going to follow up that history chapter with a little bit of an overview on the men's capsule that Kim Jones created with the House of Dior. And then we're gonna follow that up with a lovely styling section. I styled some amazing sweaters in this video, so we're gonna give you that lovely overview of sweaters, including the one that I'm wearing right now. And then we are going to finally conclude the video with none other than the resell on some of the collection pieces that I was able to cop. So let's get to it. All right, we are gonna do a quick overview of the Dior Air Jordan 1 lows. But if you want that full overview, don't forget to go back and click on that notification so that can direct you over to the full episode one series of the complete unboxing and overview of this shoe, which I highly recommend you guys watch. But for those of you who just want a quick overview of this shoe, we're gonna go through it real quick. This is, once again, the Dior Air Jordan 1 Lowe's. And of course, we've got this beautiful embroidered swoosh with that Dior Oblique and the white light gray with that translucent outsole and the hand-painted midsole. And of course, we have this lovely light white tongue here and some light gray laces with the Dior Air and swoosh shine on the tongue. And in the back, we've got the wings with the Air Dior on the back as well. And that is our quick overview of this shoe. So now we are going to get into a little bit more history on Kim Jones. All right, so let's get into the history portion about Kim Jones and how amazing of a creative director this designer is. So let's go back to when he graduated in 2003 from Central St. Martins. This school is a very prestigious school in a sense of it had some huge alum that graduated even before Jones himself. And some of those designers included one of my favorite designers, Stella McCartney. All of us have that moment in the morning where you're too late and you're like, ah, and you reach for the you, you know, you reach for the, the old faithful pieces. And for me, I want to provide those for, for my customers. I want to have them available, you know, season after season. And I want them to be timeless and effortless of the highest quality of the most beautiful material. At the same time, I have moments where I want to wear something that's really stand out, that really reflects a different part of my personality. As well as Alexander McQueen. I just think, uh... I think they've got to really understand that uh, as a designer, it's not just about what you see on everyday people, it's about furthering people's imaginations into shape, proportion and colour. I 
for me, my, my basis for anything I do is based on uh, a craftsmanship, be it tailoring, be it woodwork, or be it anything else. You know, I, I try to involve a lot of handcrafted things. Followed by Ricardo Tishi, who is currently over at. Burberry as the creative director. I was always making my clothes, like like very crazy stuff, black capes, vinyls. I never really, it was always very golf, like, you know, not so much fashion. I always give my opinion, and I was not always like welcome the opinion. <laughs> I'm very attracted to people that have a very strong opinion of things and very strong self-confidence and I love strong women and strong men, you know, people that have, you know, they have like, you know, very strong character and that's what I'm inspiring me the most. And then we have John Galliano, who is over at Margiela, but also for those of you who remember, he was also the women's creative director at one point for the women's section of Dior. Welcome to the house of Dior. My name is John Galliano. And here we have one of the first dresses I did for the house of Dior. Um, thinking about Mr. Dior's blooms and his love of gardening, and I started to venture into a more oriental garden using the, the bias cut technique, um, which I love working with. It's like working with um, liquid mercurial oil. And that just kind of leaves this, you know, kind of idea that Kim Jones is going to be huge if he's coming off of this, you know, huge alum filled school of talent you know definitely some room for him to grow as a designer and he did just that so as soon as he graduated in 2003 he actually went and started his own fashion line but it wasn't his fashion line that really groomed him for what was going to come uh, i would basically say that it was his string of corporate gigs at Umbro, Hugo Boss, as well as Pastel, which for those of you who don't know, that line was specifically run by Kanye West pre-Easy. Very interesting side note, right? And so that inevitably, I feel like, proved what this designer had in store for him for the future. So Jones eventually landed over at Dunhill, which is historically known as a British men's warehouse. And so for those of you who don't know the brand Dunhill, it's not exactly what I would have pictured Kim Jones really spending a majority of his time as a designer at. But three years into his tenure at Dunhill, Jones was appointed Louis Vuitton's menswear designer by the houses which at that point in time, Marc Jacobs actually was the creative director for Louis Vuitton. So he spent the next seven years at Louis Vuitton churning out these different collections that basically pulled everything from Hawaiian shirts to camouflage jeans into the luxury universe of Vuitton. So with Vuitton, Jones said that he basically worked a lot from getting feedback on Instagram and other social media platforms. So he basically started to merge luxury men's fashion with the social media era. So Jones was actually most well known for his supreme collaboration that he did with LB. And so how that started, it's very interesting. The CEO of Louis Vuitton actually came to Jones and asked him for the CEO's number over at Supreme. 
well, Jones basically said, you know, it was very serendipitous in a sense that he just so happened to have in his Rolodex James Jebbia's phone number. And so he basically went to the CEO at Louis Vuitton and said, listen, I'm okay with giving you his number as long as you include me in this collaboration. And so the CEO, of course, agreed to that and thus started the collaboration with Supreme and Louis Vuitton. And he, you know, really owes his credit to his intern days, he says, when he worked over at a streetwear shop called Gimme Five in the UK, which is where they actually imported the Supreme items into their store. And that's where that Rolodex number came in handy years later. Who knew? The launch of the collaboration led to a boom for LVMH as a whole. Their percentage of sales went up by 18% from the prior year, which is insane. And so in October, the private equity firm, the Carlisle Group, purchased 50% of Supreme, valuing the skate brand at $1 billion, which is like, it's not Okay then, we hold the world ransom for $100 billion. So Kim Jones exited his role as men's artistic director of Louis Vuitton in January 2018. He made that announcement four months after Supreme was purchased by the Carlisle Group. And Basically, at this point in time, Kim Jones had revolutionized the house's menswear, offering a distinctive streetwear inflected take on luxury. In March 2018, Kim Jones announced that he would be joining Dior Men as the artistic director, showing his first collection in June 2018. Jones's first show was insane. If you have not seen video footage from his show, it was something that we had not seen before on the runway. The set was in an amphitheater constructed around a 30 foot tall floral statue of Christian Dior. In the spirit of pollination, the artist Cause, who, has, who was responsible for the sculpture, had also been commissioned to redo the Dior Men's B logo. And I actually have a couple B logo options. The collection was basically a study on streetwear and couture. And that basically is something that we really hadn't seen a mixture since that Supreme and LV collaboration. And so this really was an eye opener saying that we didn't need to have a separation between couture fashion and streetwear fashion. The two could be combined. And he really instilled that in people's imagination when he took off with this phenomenal show with his first collaboration with Dior. Joan says that I'm curating what a modern day Dior would be looking at. For example, Raymond Pettibon's romantic vision compared with Jean Cactu. Daniel Arsham's work in terms of Dolly, and then he goes into comparing cause to Picasso. You have to look at those things in terms of where we are now. And that is one thing that I do admire, admire about Jones is that he loves to go into the archives. He keeps things pretty similar and how they were signified back in the day, but gives his own slight twist on how he wants to design them in the current day and time. Jones says by turning luxury houses into large scale commercial platforms for artistic makings in the age of the internet is as much about curating and creating. And the rise of this thing called streetwear is a inherently an extension of that idea in which elements of art, fashion, and music are freely spliced together. Jones' partnerships crack open an artist's world and allow both the audience and products themselves to live in kind of an alternate universe. 
Jones leads his team by basically setting an example. Those who work under Jones have said it's like almost playing on a basketball team. He really leads with the quality of his work. He's not one to just tell people necessarily what to do. He wants to lead and show them how to do things. So for example, no product serves as a better demonstration of this approach than the saddlebag. The purse designed by former Dior maestro John Galliano that Jones basically resurrected from the archives. He brought that bag back and really put it on the map. I've actually styled with the saddlebag and a lot of my different takes of the styles that I selected for the men's collection with the t-shirts. You saw that on the Brooklyn Bridge. I love my saddlebag, but I just love with what Kim Jones was able to do with that. So over the course of his four seasons, the bag has been outfitted with the signature buckle of Matthew Williams and Alix got a steampunk makeover by Soriyama and then a 3D print by Arsham. The reason I first got Matthew Williams buckle on it was to make it more masculine. Joan said for me, Galliano saddlebag was very masculine because it reminded him of cowboys and gauchos. Joan says there's no time to think about anything other than what's next for me right now. It's not a bad thing, but when people ask me how my life has changed since I got this job, I can't tell you. And I think that really just nails the pin on the donkey there. He has become such a huge key figure in the designer world. And I couldn't even imagine another creative director putting a shoe like this or a capsule like this together. And I just think that Kim Jones has really exemplified himself as one of the most unique and most successful designers of our current time. All right, so now let's go through a bit of the items that were in the fall 2020 men's capsule collection for Dior and Air Jordan. So of course we know we had the lows and the highs in the Air Jordan 1 silhouette, but I wanna get more into detail on some of the clothing as I haven't actually seen any real content out there besides Travis Scott's video and a few pictures online, which is why I wanted to give you guys an overview of just basically all of the items that were released in this collection. So we've got tracksuits, vests, sweaters, suiting options, a bucket hat, which was in a navy blue, socks, ties, jewelry, which you see I have this one in a silver. It also came in a gold as well as wallets. There was a card wallet as well as just a regular wallet with a zipper around it. There were handbags, more like a satchel that came in a navy as well as a gray. Then we saw two types of shorts. We had basketball shirts in a gray and a navy as well as the same coloring in a dress short in a gray and a navy. And then there were also button down shirts as well as button down short sleeve shirts. And we also saw a sweatband in a navy color with the Wings logo on there. Then we also had some options for two colorways in the vest. So in the cream and the navy colorway. And as well as the sweaters, we saw this in the navy as well as a light blue and a natural cream color. T-shirts were also launched in three colorways, which came in a white, a gray, as well as a navy color with the Wings logo on it as well. And so this was pretty much a full fitted collection. In the track suits, you had an option of a light gray with a matching track suit jacket with those track suit pants, as well as a navy track suit jacket and track suit shorts on that as well. Didn't mean pants, both had track suit shorts to match. 
And so yeah, I think they did just a great job with the collection. Next up, I'm going to go over to the styling section and kind of talk to you guys about how I styled some of the items in the capsule. This is more of a fall feel just because right now it's 90 degrees out and I don't think I would want to be rocking the sweater outside. So now let's move quickly on to the styling section, shall we? All right, let's get into the styling section. So I styled for the section two of the sweaters that were in the capsule. One of them was navy and one of them was a natural cream color. And so for both, I gave you a shorts option as well as a pants option. So we'll start with the navy shirt. So for the navy shirt, I wore it exactly with this white button down shirt underneath and then I paired it with just some simple basketball gray shorts. I wanted to keep this kind of a very simple sporty but casual look. I think that the collection really exemplifies, you know, when they talk about it, Jordan's look in the 80s and how he was very sophisticated but also kept that sporty feel to all of his looks and they kind of combined all of that when they were creating all of the different looks for this capsule. And so next up, I paired this sweater with some green cargo pants. So in that lookbook with Travis Scott, I saw that he was actually wearing the vest in the same colorway, but with some nice kind of camo looking green pants. And so I wanted to give you a similar option so you could see that in more of a cargo pant look. And now we're gonna move on and do the cream natural sweater. With that look, I just switched it up with the button down shirt coloring scheme and I did a navy color underneath that. And then I paired that with the basketball navy shorts. Again, I just kind of wanted to have that sophisticated but kind of sporty athleisure look going on there. So that's where I combined those options. Then I paired it with some basic just khaki pants, which I rolled up at the bottoms to kind of give you guys a different feel. And I think, yeah, it just was more of kind of a casual, still sporty look. The pants can be dressy, but you know, they're Lululemon pants, of course, they definitely have an athletic appeal to them as well. And I think that those two just paired really well together, as well as the cream and the khaki colors, just super neutral tones. And I wanted to kind of keep it natural looking, like the name of the sweater. And that's where I got that look. So let me know what you guys thought about those looks. Of course, you saw that I also had that messenger little tiny bag with me. And uh, it's just a great navy color. It goes really pretty much with anything. And so that's why I styled it with that collection as well. And uh, yeah, so let me know what you guys think of the options that I selected and paired it with. What was your favorite look? And now we're gonna move into the resale portion of the video. The resale portion is brought to you by Suplex, the app. This is an amazing app. We are fortunate to have it in a sense that it's an aggregator system that allows you to see the top five platforms in one space. And so those five platforms include StockX, Goat, eBay, Flight Club, as well as Stadium Goods, all in one place at the same time. So that's gonna save you time, energy, money, you name it, this is the app to go to when you're trying to resell and buy products such as shoes, clothing, and for this specific portion of the episode, I used it to look up the price points of all of these items that I copped because I wanna see how they're currently doing on the resale market. So I first want to start with the t-shirts. So we're gonna start with the navy shirt, which I was able to cop in a size small. So we're gonna go through the retail value, which was $750. Currently, this navy shirt in an XXS is going for $1,700. Then for an extra small, it's going for 749 
And then a small is going for $7.89, a medium is $8.57, a large is $1,100, a XL is $9.20, an XXL is $2,341. And so unfortunately, my size is not going too much over the retail price. There is a little bit of money to be made. We'll see if we wait on it for a little bit of time as there weren't that many made. This is pretty limited in the collection. So I'm hoping that this price point will continue to grow. This size, of course, in the t-shirts came in XXS all the way up to a triple XL. Next up, we have the same exact shirt. And again, this is 100% cotton, beautiful embroidering going on. This shirt is definitely quality. It retailed again at $750 and this is in the gray colorway. So currently the gray is doing a little bit better than the navy is doing right now. Uh, the XXS is doing, uh, going for 802. The extra small is 850, the small is 822, the medium is 981, the large is 970, the extra large is 1200, the XXL is 900 and the triple XL is 1000. So depending on what size you got, there's a little bit of money to be made in this shirt on the resale market. Next up, I'm going to go through the sweaters. And so I got this sweater in a small and the sweater is retailed at $13.50. And as far as the resale market goes, an XXS is going for $3,912. The extra small is $2,399. The small is $1,939. The medium is $2,145. And then the large is going for $2,190. So a little bit of money to be made depending again on which size you got. This sweater is 50% cashmere and 50% cotton. For those of you wondering what the material is, very high quality sweater, very comfy and soft, not itchy at all, because I hate itchy sweaters, biggest pet peeve. Then we're gonna go into the natural sweater, which I got in a medium, and it has the navy instead of the cream coloring. So this, again, retailed at $13.50 and the natural and a small, it's going for 11,083 ask, which highly doubt that it's gonna sell for that price point. Uh, the medium is 2,608, the large is 2,936, the extra large is 3,560, and the XXL is 3,782. So definitely the sweaters are doing a bit better in my opinion than the t-shirts are currently doing. Uh, but overall, I think that because this collection was a bit rare, these items I think will start to increase in value as they do run out of stock on those sizes for the reseller market. My fingers are crossed that these prices are going to jut up as this item, all of these items that I have become more limited. So hopefully in price range it does better for me but if you are looking to purchase this some of these items are not going that high over retail so it makes sense for you to purchase them right now i wouldn't wait as though as i said before if these items do become even more limited the prices may increase and shut up especially when we start to see these items more and people come fall all right so thanks again everybody for tuning into my channel shade tv my name today was Professor Hill. We find that help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it. I hope that you learned an amazing lesson, a lesson about Kim Jones, as well as I hope I informed you well enough on all these amazing items in the capsule 2020 collection so don't forget if you don't have the suplex app download that app as you will be able to find all of these resale price points on their app right now if you're looking to buy any of these items as well as if you're looking to resell any of these items
And as always, don't forget if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up at the end if you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave me any comments or questions on any of these capsule items that released, even on items that maybe I wasn't able to show you today. And then as well, don't forget, hit those notifications as we do want to alert you as soon as we have any upcoming and new videos. So until next time, once again, guys, we'll see you then.